Love the Board Game Week here with Todd from AEG, and we get to look at Mary Poses today. Now, I know it's all about butterflies, and it's from the famed designer Elizabeth Hargrave, whom we all know and love from Wingspan, who designed Wingspan. So can you give us a, a little bit of background on how this game came to be? Yeah, absolutely. So a few years ago, probably about two years ago, AEG put out a call for our big game night, which was the special releases that we do at Gen Con every year. We have that big 700 to 1,000 player event and some new games get released at that night and then they go on sale the next day at Gen Con and they go on sale in stores. And we had been doing it for a couple of years and had been quite successful with some of our games. And so uh, our owner, John, decided to put out a call for uh, female designers. He kind of wanted to feature female designers as the theme for the 2020 big game night. And so we got a lot of, app, um, not applications, but prototypes in. And we began playing through the prototypes. And this one, Mariposas, actually really stood out. And it was from the, at that time, unknown designer, Elizabeth Hargrave, because Wingspan had not been released yet. And we signed her for it. And we began development on it. In the meantime, Wingspan came out and, of course, became what it became. And so we felt pretty <laughs> happy that we had already signed on with this one. So we continued it for the release at Big Game Night this year. But of course, as you know, everything went a little sideways. So we had to change the release up that way. But we've been really happy with the reception to it since it went on sale last month. Excellent. And so can you tell me a little bit about the gameplay? Like how many people and how long is it? Sure. So this is a game for uh, two to five players. And in it, you play for about 45 minutes, maybe 50 minutes. You are, of course, trying to breed your butterflies, let them follow their migratory patterns, and move about North America as they complete their circuit of migration over the course of a year. Excellent. And so um, let, let, let's walk through a little bit about how the mechanics work and, and what you're doing in this game so I can get an idea of how, how we're going to be playing this. Okay. So as you can see there, you have a board that is your eastern seaboard of North America. It begins down in uh, Michoacan in Mexico, and then it goes all the way up northeast toward Canada. And in the game, it's fairly simple. You have cards that are your movement. And different cards show different things. So one card might show a butterfly moving four spaces. Another card might show three butterflies moving one space each. And at any point, there you go, there they are. There's a few of them. And at any point, you're going to have two in your hand. So on your turn, you're going to pick one of two cards, play it, and then move your butterflies that way. Now, at the beginning of the game, you're going to start with one butterfly. So you're going to have one butterfly down in... Uh, Mia Chokan, and I'm butchering that. I'll just go on record. I butcher <laughs> that name every time. Um, and let's say that you played the card that let you move five. So you would play it in front of you. You take your butterfly, and then you would move five spaces on the board, leaving there. So you can move any five and land wherever you want, and we'll talk about what happens when you get there. Okay, so the space you landed on, you, there's a flower underneath it. There's a symbol of a flower. So you're going to go over to the flower buckets over there on your right, the little containers, and take one of that flower token. Okay. Now, clearly you're wondering, why am I taking flower tokens? Well, that is how you're <laughs> going to end up breeding new butterflies. So as you collect uh -huh. those, you're going to collect sets of them. And at each round, it will it'll require more per set. But you can eventually create new generations of butterflies. So if you look really closely on the board, you'll notice that there are some spaces where the different hexes meet that have a little caterpillar on them, right? Yes. The, those are called milkweed areas. If you stop your turn and land on a space adjacent to one of those, and you have this correct number of tokens, so if you notice on the first season, you need two matching flowers or any three flowers. So uh, that's up in the top right of the board there is a reference to that. Yeah. So let's say that oh. you landed on that space and you did have the two matching flower tokens. You could then turn those in uh, back to the bank to take one of your generation two butterflies, which are the little butterflies with the two above their antenna. And then you're going to put it on the same space as that level one. 
And as my daughter says, you've now made butterfly babies. So <laughs> from then on, when your turn comes back around and you play another card, you can move either of those butterflies. And that's where those cards that move multiple butterflies get interesting because now you can move your butterflies different places and collect more tokens because there's more butterflies going to different areas to collect tokens. That lets you get more and more. Now, one thing we'll note is that by spring, which is the season that you're in when you begin, it says four. That means everybody's going to get to play four actions before the spring is over. After everybody's fourth action, that's the end of the season. Now, at the end of that season, you're going to get some special scoring abilities, which are on those cards, the one you have flipped over there. Um, I'm trying to look close enough, but I believe, uh, read to me the top one, because I'm trying to make sure I can, ah, there we go. So for this one, it says, any butterflies that are on that particular color space north of Lawrence on the map are worth six points at the end of that season. So uh -huh. since these change every game, they give you some uh, benefits to trying to move certain ways and get to certain places. So that kind of eggs you on okay. to get more points. Now, after everybody scored their points, you're, you're given one more free hatching. So you get to take one more uh, generation two butterfly and put it on the board where one of your generation ones is. And then sadly, nature decides that all your generation ones, which should be one at this point, will die off and they come off the board. And this is going to oh. happen at the end of every round with each subsequent generation. Oh. So you're going to continue to... Oh, go ahead. No, yeah, I was just thinking. So you need to get a generation three in order to even play anything in, in the third round? Correct. Yes, because your prior oh. ones are all going to die off. And <laughs> one thing you'll notice is that the farther you go north, you'll get better rewards. Across those special cards that change every game, you're going to get more points for going farther. There's some spaces that have double rewards on the uh, flower tokens. So you might get more. And just all these different ways to score points. Now, here's the trick, though. A lot of big points at the end of the game come from getting your Generation 4 butterflies back to Mexico. So if you decide, you have to decide at which point you're going to begin to turn around the migration and head back. Because each butterfly that makes it back to Mia Chokan by the end of the game will be worth greater and greater points. Okay. So what's neat is this actually follows, you know, the real pattern of the monarchs. Elizabeth put a ton of research into this game. She spent a lot of time and effort learning about them. They just fascinated her. And she, you can really tell how the game really captures what they, what really happens to them. And it's fascinating to learn that some of these generations only live for, you know, a month or two and then uh, die off. Whereas the ones who get back to Mexico that overwinter there live longer than any of them. Wow, that, that is really interesting. Um, so yes, I guess I have I have a question. So each each round you have a number of actions, like you said, you in the spring you have four actions. Now, if you had more than one butterfly, does each butterfly get four actions or just one action meaning move one butterfly? Right. It's one action uh per turn per player. Now the card you play may let you move more than one butterfly. So for instance, you oh. had that card that showed three butterflies moving. There's also a yes. card that has two butterflies moving slightly farther each. So you can choose which ones to play based off how many of your butterflies you want to move. Yeah, there's one, for okay. example, and that so will let you move two butterflies, two spaces each. Okay, and could you move the same butterfly four spaces in that case? You can, or they... you You can okay. combine them, okay. yeah. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Um, and if you notice, there's a few special spaces on the board that represent different cities, such as New yes. Orleans and Lawrence, Kansas, um, various places like that. These are what are called way stations. Now, these are places that are known migratory stops along the way for monarchs. A lot of these cities have often set up reserves for them so that they, they grow milkweed, they try to create an, uh, an enticing environment for them to come there to be able to survive and breed. 
And so we have these on the map and the first player to get to one of those gets to flip that token over and they'll get something special. So in this case, they're going to get the green caterpillar card, which is off to the right of the board. When you collect the full set of four of a color, you're going to get a special benefit that's on the card that's revealed to the right of them. And those will be different every game. So you can get a different benefit oh. in different ways. Mm -hmm. So the, the tile to the right uh, will give you some sort of effect, such as at the end of the game, you're considered to have an extra butterfly in Mia Chokan, or at the end of the uh, fall, you get one extra action or something to that effect. You know, that one's going to give you extra points for different conditions and things like that. Now, okay. when you um, collect those cards, they're also worth points at the end of the game. So there is a benefit to go fluttering about to all the different cities that you can. <laughs> now, you may have noticed that the person who landed on that space, there's no uh, flower token there. There's no so flower. There You're giving up the chance to get flowers. <laughs> well, you do, but the first person who lands there, the one who reveals it, gets to roll that die that's on the table, and they'll get whatever oh. flower token comes up. Oh, okay. So you still get a flower. You still get a flower. And in that case, you get a wild. You get any flower you want. Oh, excellent. So, so that's the benefit for being the first one to get to a way station. And, um, and so, yeah, that's, that's essentially the game. It becomes a question of, you know, how fast do you want to race? Um, how soon do you turn around? Some things we've noticed is that oftentimes it, it sounds a little funny, but you'll come up with sacrificial butterflies, which you know are going to have no <laughs> chance of making it back, but you use them to go collect cards and stuff to get you more <laughs> points before the end. So you're sending your yeah, little absolutely. butterfly army out to do whatever you need. So I guess I have a question. If, if I get to a city first, can other people still go to that city to get the same card I did? They can they can. The only thing is they don't get to roll the die. They know what card ah. is there because you've revealed it. So they have a little bit better knowledge, but they also don't get the other benefit. You do get a little benefit for being the explorer who goes there first. <laughs> for being the first brave little butterfly to fly to that city yeah. gets a benefit. And so I, I know some of the, um, the points at the end of spring. So for example, you're going to score depending on where your butterfly is according to that city. Now, how do you judge um, how north you are if, if you're on the space does that count as north or no if you, you have to actually to be that... if you look at if you look at the map you'll notice how um going from looking from west to east there's rows and you have to be on mm. at least the row higher than that city to be counted as north of that city so for instance if you took uh new orleans for example you would have to be on at least that row higher one higher or more to be considered north of okay. it. Same thing with east or west. You have to be on a space that's either to the right or left of that space. Now, because it's a hex, it, it staggers a little bit, but you just judge it based off, are you on the right side or the left side of that uh, particular space? And can you qualify for both of the rewards with one butterfly? You can indeed in some cases. There are a few where <laughs> it may overlap and the butterfly may count toward both. Because, for instance, there's some that reward you for having three butterflies north of a place or three butterflies south of a place and also might give you a reward for every butterfly on, say, a red space or something of that manner. So that way you get more, you could have a butterfly that qualifies for both, for instance. Ah, okay. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be cool. So you want to try and get as many points from those as possible. And those are revealed right. each round at the beginning of the round? So yes, what you do is there's a deck of them and you shuffle them up and you put one fall one face down, one summer one face down, and then you begin the game oh, with the spring okay. one face up. So they're going to be different every game and you don't know what's going to happen until you get to the next season, at which point you reveal the new method of scoring in that season, which, you know, you might be in good position for or you might be wildly out of position for it. <laughs> I like to plan ahead of time. <laughs> I know it's a little challenging, but you know, you, you're a little butterfly. You kind of get tossed on the wind occasionally and you can't make <laughs> you too much long-term plans. 
No, I mean, I think that's really cool that it's, like, she put in so much research to actually f figure out, like, where all these, like, pit stops, if you will, are. Um, so, right, it's you know, really that's cool. A really cool. <laughs> because I don't know if my Zoom thing will show, but in the rule book, there's actually an entire page just dedicated to, like, infographics and stuff of the, uh, oh, cool. of the butterflies. You can learn a lot about them and how it goes. We actually worked with a group called Monarch Watch. And Monarch Watch will actually send you, if you request it, a free kit to set up your own milkweed garden to be a little way station for monarchs as they travel through. So you can actually have real butterflies at your house when you play the game if you set it up. And it helps, the, it helps their species, right? They have more places to breed, more places to, to stop and eat. And uh, it's, it's really, really neat what all went into it. Wow, that is that is so interesting. I didn't even know like anything like that existed. So obviously, if you love butterflies, that is something you should definitely <laughs> look into because you know you're helping butterflies. <laughs> Who doesn't want to help exactly. butterflies? <laughs> exactly. Um, so, so. Uh, let's see. There's there's a there's a there's a couple questions from Eric. Um, actual cocoons as promo items. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we do have one um, promo item that's available um, on our AEG store. It's our purple butterflies. You notice each of the butterflies come in different colors. Um, there were, these were created as a special. There was a young lady, I believe she was two, three years old, um, who had passed away. And her, uh, great, her favorite thing were these little purple butterflies that were all over her toys, her clothes, different things like that. Her parents had taken her to see them and it was one of their best memories. And so we made the little purple butterfly promo Aww. set in memory of her. And so you can get oh, those at alderactstore.com and it's just another color you can play with, but um, oh, that's, that's our that. only promo right that. now. <laughs> um, how, how did you find the artist? Uh, Eric was All right, so the artist's name is Indy Maverick and uh, the one of the, Art, or the art director on the game was Josh Wood, who you probably know from Cat Lady, Santa Monica. Yeah, yeah. Uh, different games like that. He contacted Andy Maverick. She's actually a tattoo artist from Mexico. And he spoke with her and she brought a really unique style to the design of the art, to the design of the board. And then of course, Matt Paquette, who we work with quite a bit, did the graphic design to pull it all together but she really brought a really neat look to the game that is, in my opinion, from, from my eye, a little different than a lot of other board games you might see, just because of that tattoo artist style that she brought. Yeah, it's really attractive. I mean, I love that the color, the board just pops. I love that. I think it's like really cool. So that was a it good It has choice. a really neat color palette. <laughs> yeah. So they did a, they did yeah, a really good so job. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, so it looks like we're almost out of time, but we still have a little bit more time. So is there anything else you'd like to tell us about Mariposas or how you can get it or? Sure. So Mariposas is available at your local retailer right now. Uh, you can pick it up at your local game store, and that's where we encourage you to go. Um, it is uh, available there, and um, it has been on sale since the 28th of August. It came out the same day as Truffle Shuffle, which is a game I'm going to show you all tomorrow. I'll be on here, so Ooh. tune back in to see Truffle <laughs> Shuffle. Um, let's see, in other AEG news, um, next week we're launching a Kickstarter for Thunderstone Quest, two new expansions that'll be out. Um, we just started promoting that pretty heavily today, but that'll be live on the 29th, so, or 28th, I'm sorry, 28th. So we want everybody to check that out as well. Excellent, so look for that Kickstarter next week for Thunderstone Quest. Um, and Mariposas is available at retail right today. Um, it is. Thank you so much. And join us tomorrow because we're, all, we're live all day tomorrow. And Todd will be back showing off Truffle Shuffle. <laughs> yes, indeed. You'll be making boxes of chocolate. We're going to take you from butterflies to chocolate. I might just eat it all, though. That's the problem. <laughs> exactly. It's from the same folks who brought us uh, Point Salad. So, you know, you get to start the meal off healthy. Oh, yeah. And you get to end your night with lots of chocolate. So. <laughs> Oh, that sounds amazing. Uh, Point Salad is fantastic <laughs> as well. So um, thank you so much, Todd, for showing us Mariposa. It looks amazing. And this is one that everybody should be checking out. 
So. <laughs> thank, you, thank you, Steph. We appreciate it.